Welcome back to the bench. Today, we'll be looking at this weather station that I've made out of this Arduino Mega, which is talking over a wireless link. This is the 433 megahertz link I showed in the most recent mailbag video. It's talking to a BME 280 sensor on the porch, which is measuring temperature, humidity, and pressure, and is displaying those on this OLED screen here. You can see the little dot in the corner blinks every time it gets a packet. The intermittency is because these 433 megahertz radios are really quite terrible. Uh, the transmitter is only 10 or 15 meters away, and even though it's sending packets about every 5 seconds, this uh, frequently won't get them. When the data is captured, it's also stored on this micro SD card using this handy breakout. Let me just show you the loadup of how this uh, turns on. So it's turning on, link, and then here we have the first packet. You can see the little thing blinking in the corner. As we get more packets, it blinks again. Next, I want to show you uh, how the data gets transmitted. The communication is happening over an RF link that looks just like this. Uh, this is the transmitter side, and this is the receiver. These devices are very simple. Basically, um, you put uh, VCC and ground here, and then when you want the transmitter to turn on, you bring this pin high, and when you want it to turn off, you bring this pin low. And so that just literally turns on and off the oscillator, which um, has an antenna connected to it. And then on this side, you have what is basically just an AM receiver uh, with, I think that's an op amp on it, that basically just decides, oh, this signal is, is, is high enough that I should consider it a one, uh, or it's low enough um, that I should consider it a zero. So uh, for that reason, these are very susceptible to noise uh, and all kinds of, of other problems. So in general, these don't work very well, and I think I'm going to end up having to replace them. But let's take a look at what the transmission between these two looks like using this uh, software-defined radio, which is really just a USB TV tuner. Uh, I showed this in a mailbag, uh, but this will be the first time I'm actually showing it in a video. So let's uh, head over to the computer now. This is Cubic SDR, which is an application on Mac OS X for doing software-defined radio with simple protocols. Uh, in this case, um, it doesn't give me the ability to decode packets but um, it will let me show you in a waterfall kind of what's actually happening in the spectrum. So I'm going to choose this generic device um, and press start. It's really that easy. Uh, so here I have it tuned to an FM station. Uh, but if I go over here and change this to 400 and 33 megahertz, So you can see there's just noise, and then there's the radio signal right there. So you can see it sending data about once every five seconds. So we're outside now. Uh, you can see I have the power bank plugged in, and I just have it plugged in to um, this USB to serial converter, which is powering uh, an Arduino Pro Mini board here, which is connected to the BME 280 sensor and a radio. And I have basically a dipole um, here, which is just threaded through the mesh backing of this chair. And then inside the house, um, only about 10 meters away, is the radio. And even there, I have to be really careful in order to get the connection not to be spotty. 
I just wanted to take a quick look at the code that I'm using uh, to transmit the data. This side here is the transmitter side, which is connected to the sensor. Um, so I'm pulling in the BME280 library, the Adafruit sensor library. Um, I don't actually need SPI. Uh, and the virtual wire library, which is what I'm using in order to communicate with the radio. Uh, so here I initialize, or I create an instance of the BME, uh, which is the sensor device. And I also create this struct, which is uh, the packet that's going to get sent across the wire. In the setup section, uh, I set up my sensor and the radio. That's what this VW is. That's the virtual wire. Uh, and then basically in the loop, I fill my packet with data. P is a packet. And I just fill that with temperature, pressure, altitude, which isn't I'm not displaying that because um, it's just based on pressure and I don't have sea level set to what the current sea level pressure is so it's not actually accurate but it's there so I'm adding it and then humidity. And all of these are doubles. Um, then I print it out which was just for debugging and what I do is I send the packet twice. Now this might look a little confusing to people who aren't very familiar with C but basically this send function takes a buffer here and a size is the second thing. So what I do is I give it a pointer to the packet, uh, I tell it that it's the right type, and I tell it how many bytes to read. And what happens is this struct here um, is really just telling the compiler for C++ to put these bytes together next to each other. If I had weird sizes or things that wouldn't line up correctly, you do actually have to tell it to make sure that it doesn't insert any blank padding space. And I probably should be doing that here, uh, but I didn't bother with it because it was working without that. So what that does is it is it turns my data into a chunk of bytes. Um, that are in a certain order. And in this case, it's 16 bytes because it's four bytes for each double. So it sends it, it waits for that to be finished, and then I immediately send it again um, just to help uh, mitigate some of the, the range issues that I was having. And then I wait five seconds. So that's it for the transmission side. So he, let's look over here at the receiver side. This is a fair bit more complicated because we're dealing with the radio, the I squared C uh, OLED device, and also an SD card. So I'm pulling in the SPI and SD libraries here, and that's in order to talk to write the f out to the SD card. I'm pulling in the UX 8x8 lib, which is what I'm using to write to the OLED display. This is a little bit lighter weight than. Uh, all of UHG2 um, and I just kind of wanted to try it since it doesn't use a buffer uh, in the in the microcontroller and then I'm also including virtual wire and this same struct which is the same as we had in the transmission side. I initialized the display uh, and you noticed that there was some you probably noticed that there was some trash on the right hand side of the display and that's because it is actually the wrong display. Uh, that is a 1.3 inch OLED display which apparently uses the SH1106 chip but I was unable to find a constructor for that chip that used I squared C. They did have one for SPI but not I squared C. This works but it's off by just a little bit. So if anyone does know how to fix that um, with the U8 G2 lib or the U8x8, uh, please please put a comment down below. I'd, I'd love to hear how to do that. In the setup section, I initialize my uh, OLED display and the SD card interface. Um, and I also set up everything necessary to begin listening uh, with the virtual wire radio. Oh, and I should have mentioned earlier, this is the baud rate, so that's a thousand bits per second. 
and that has to be the same between the two. So where is that? Yeah, that's right here. Um, and then, just to show that everything's ready, I write the word link on here uh, in double-sized font. So this have packet tells me whether or not I should uh, basically clear the screen to get rid of this link. And then what I'm doing is I'm just um, getting a message and putting it inside that p packet. And because the, the struct is just uh, basically telling the compiler how to organize the bytes or basically giving names to certain chunks of the bytes, what happens is when we get bytes over the wire and we put them in that struct, then I can just access them like this, p.temperature, p.pressure, and so on. So that's really useful. Um, here I'm clearing the display only that first time when it already has the word link on it. Uh, but otherwise, things already match up, so I don't have to do that. And because we don't have a buffer with U8x8, um, if you clear the display, you can you can see uh, it has to redraw everything, and that takes a decent amount of time. So then basically we draw the temperature line, we draw the humidity line, and the pressure line. I start drawing that period just to show in the bottom right hand corner, just to show that we've had data. Then I open this file w1.txt and uh, if that opened correctly we write one line uh, basically in CSV format of, of the four different values. Um, and Otherwise we draw a little X on the screen just so you know that there was a problem. We wait a second and then we clear out that particular spot. That's it. That's the whole program. Alright, so that's it for this introduction to the weather station project. I think I'm going to be replacing the radios with these RFM 69 modules which have quite a bit better range um, and uh, much better interference suppression. So that should be much better, I hope. Um, I'm going to experiment with uh, keeping the power low as low as possible on the transmitter side. Um, I still need to decide exactly what power source I'm going to use there. And then on the receiver side, uh, I would really like to kind of make this into something that can just sit on my uh, bedside table so that I can take a look at it and just see like what the weather is in the morning. Um, so I think I will be exploring uh, I, I think I'll need to add a real-time clock to that so that it can have the time as well. I may replace this Arduino Mega with an ESP8266 so that I can upload the data as it comes in to the internet so that it's available in a graph form uh, some, somewhere else. Those are the modifications that I've thought of so far, but if you have any good ideas, uh, have something you'd like me to do with this, please leave a comment below. Uh, and that brings me to the obligatory. Thank you for watching. Uh, please consider subscribing if you like these videos uh, and if you're interested in these kinds of projects. And if you have somebody you know who's interested in this sort of thing, consider sharing it with them. I'm really trying to grow the channel right now uh, and the biggest problem I have is that people don't know to watch my videos. So sharing really helps. So I've put a subscribe link right about there, and there should be two videos on the screen. Uh, if you're interested, click on one of them. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day. Bye.